Hey, love. It's me. <laughs> it's me, your, your love. <laughs> um, it is Wednesday, February twenty eighth. And it is 7.38 p.m. Pacific. And I'm sitting on the couch watching TV. And all of a sudden, this rush of words just started flowing to my head. Things that I felt, things that I need to say, or things that I want to say. And after listening to these thoughts, they started to get bigger and bigger. And the more I listened, the more I felt guided to hop on here and record. I'm a little nervous just because, you know, like I'm really sharing my heart. I'm sharing my truth. Um, I don't know if you'll get this message. I don't remember if I said that or not, but I don't know if you'll get this message, but I'm responding to the message that I received from you. Um, I love you. I love you, and I miss you too. And it is kind of weird to miss someone that you've never met. But at the same time, you can sense them, feel them, know that they're real because you are theirs and they are yours. You guys are destined to be together. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I'm very, very, very proud of you. And I'm very, very excited to meet you too. It's been one hell of a fucking journey, I'll say that. Um, you have to mind me. Um, just kind of ignore me if I pause. I took like, oh, I didn't take that much. I took 10 milligrams of uh, um, indica. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you take edibles or anything, but I'm a very THC, this is a THC home, <laughs> so. Um, yeah. So if I pause for a minute, just ignore me. <laughs> but, um, it's funny. I, a few years ago, uh, I was taking, a few years ago, it was only a few years ago that I just started taking edibles and I was taking edibles like every night. And the reason I started taking edibles is because I was very unhappy and I would come home from a job that just energetically wiped me out. Like I felt anxious, frazzled, like I literally every fucking night I would just come, look forward to coming home, going for a walk, you know, taking a shower um, and then popping 
a couple edibles, one to two edibles in a night, and I would just float and fly and uh, just forget about what happened that day, escape from the reality, reality that I was living in, and I would run to the reality that I wanted to live in. Um, and I would kind of get lost in different worlds and different realities because I would literally be listening to my music all night. And something that I would also do every night is I used to listen to you every night. I used to listen to your content every night. I listened to, if you can hear that snoring in the background, that's my baby girl, Sammy. Um, she's my kitty cat, my baby girl. Um, fuck. I lost my train of thought. But yeah, I was saying that I used to listen to your content every night. I used to come home and listen to it during my lunch break. I worked on a, I worked at a, a property, a multifamily property, and so I lived on the property. And my commute to work was like a three-minute walk. It was convenient. That was the convenient part. But the industry was just not for me. It was totally out of my alignment. But um, So I would come home for lunch, right? And then after I was done with work, I would come home, go for a walk, and then come back and, like, do my business. But I used to come home and listen to you during my lunch break. <laughs> and then I would come home and listen to you at night, your content. And I would fluctuate depending on where I was mentally, what it is that I needed to hear. Um, so I would listen to you your sleep aid content, your NSFW content, and your rambles. And some of your rambles were, actually your rambles were like one of the fa my favorite things that I used to listen to. Um, <laughs> gosh, she's snoring really loud. <sighs> but, um, yeah. And one thing that I learned about you is that you love to tell stories and you love to read. And I thought I would share with you a little story of mine. It's a story that's very, very close to my heart. A story that you might even relate to, but anyways, here it goes. So, once upon a time, there was a girl that used to be at home and listen to her music and just get lost in her imagination every day. She was an only child and she grew up in a single parent home and she used to just stay home all day by choice, especially during the summer when she didn't have school and then even after school, she would come home and, you know, do her homework and get lost in her music, watch her cartoons, her cartoon, her after school cartoon lineup. Some of those cartoons included Tailspin, Bonkers, <laughs> DuckTales, Darkwing Duck, Goof Troop. Oh my God. Um, yeah. So anyways, oh, Animaniacs too, and Tiny Toons. <laughs> but anyways, she used to love to get lost in her imagination, and she would explore the worlds 
of different music. She would have explored the world of the song created by the artist and she would explore worlds that she would create. And she was like, that was her favorite thing. She was the happiest when she was just lost in her worlds or lost in the world that she created for the day or for the moment or to that song. And she used to imagine different things like what she was going to wear to an event or, you know, how she was going to act when she grew up and went to high school. She used to think about walking, you know, like she used to create music videos in her head and she used to walk about the halls of the, not the halls, but the, like in a mall, (laughs) like when she's of age to go hang out at the mall. At the time that she used to do this, she was, well, actually she's been doing it since she was a kid. So since she was like four or five, she's been doing this, but I feel like it started to get heavier according to the story. It started to get heavier when she started getting older like in elementary junior high and so on and so forth but anyways she always used to imagine these worlds right but the one main thing that she always imagined was stories and worlds about love and romance and walking by that guy at school (laughs) or that guy noticing her that she had no idea was staring at her. She would often think and imagine the guy that she would one day hopefully find, possibly marry. And she would do this all of the time, over and over and over, every, every day, every night. And it never got old. As she got older, she dated here and there. And (laughs) she... She never did anything, like, major. She never really went all the way with guys, you know? She would just experiment and try different things here and there, but never fully all the way. She grew up in church, but she thought very differently from her religion or just the environment that she grew up in. And even though she hoped to possibly get married one day, she didn't necessarily believe that you had to wait until marriage to have sex. But she still just wanted to make sure that whoever she slept with was, you know, it was going to be something serious So she dated here and there. She would end things with guys that she knew was just not (laughs) going to go anywhere. She knew she could feel it. Um, But for the most part, she always was like never interested in dating because she wanted to focus on in school and like, you know, she never wanted to find herself in boy drama um, or worry about getting pregnant so she just stayed busy with her schoolwork her after school activities like dance and church at the time and you know she would go on about her business but still the people that she met the guys that she dated you know 
which mainly happened, which mainly didn't start until college. They taught her what it is that she wanted and what it is that she didn't want. This girl... And her, (laughs) fuck, (laughs) I don't want this story to be too long. Let's just fast forward to this girl definitely went on a journey, you know, to figure out who she was. She went to college for dance and started teaching dance when she was in high school at age 15, and she continued doing that for a very long time. And she had other jobs here and there on the side, and she was basically the independent contractor for the majority of her life. She worked in corporate here and there, but she never really, like, did anything where she was, like, really satisfied and proud, and she always just was looking for that thing that was going to help her create the lifestyle that she wanted to live. And finally she just got to a point where she was just like, fuck it, you know what, I'm just going to get something that is consistent, stable, and let's just see what happens, you know. The thing is, once she started working there, she was only two months in working there officially that she then realized that she was completely unhappy. She was unhappy with where she was working. She was unhappy with where she was in her life. And it's like her battery had just run out. Her energetic battery had run the fuck out. But she committed to working at this company for at least two years and said, well, let's just give it a year and see what happens. During that year... (laughs) She used to come home and, you know, just zone and chill the fuck out. Something to calm her nerves and help her get through the next day in the year, right? So one day, one evening... (laughs) This girl, she made a decision that she was going to figure out who the fuck she was, what the fuck she wanted, what the fuck she was all about. Because she just was just so unhappy with her life. So after she made that decision, she started to notice some things happening. Like she was drawn to watch or do certain things. And she was very aware that she was being led intuitively. It wasn't like just some choice that she made from her head. It's like her gut was pulling her in these directions or showing her things that she never was aware of before. And one of those things was... listening to certain audio, erotic audio, NSFW, sleep aid audio. And there was one day she came across (laughs) there was one day she came across this content that she started that she had been seeing in her YouTube feed for a while and she listened to it and the guy's voice sounded very familiar 
very warm and welcoming and the energy was just like hella chill, right? And the story, the role play, the scenario had just seemed very familiar as if I had experienced it in a dream or as if she had experienced it in a dream. And she really liked this person's content, so she continued to listen. And one night she was listening to this guy's audio. It was a sleep aid one. And she started to notice some things happening within her. She started to really resonate with the guy's story, identify with some of the things that he shared, and realize that she had a lot of things in common with his story. She also started to notice that her inner child felt very safe, felt very good, felt very connected to this guy's story. So much to the point where it's like she felt she had known him. Like she had known him all of her life, but was just becoming aware of him. Just meeting him for the first time. And so as she continued to listen, all of a sudden, this tiny but very bold voice whisper in the pit of her gut said, it's him. And when she heard that voice, it's literally like time stopped. Time stopped. Everything around her became irrelevant. And (laughs) all of the scripting and journaling that she had written about the kind of guy that she wanted to meet, the kind of guy that she wanted to be with, the kind of relationship that she wanted to have with this guy. It just... It was irrelevant. It didn't matter anymore. She didn't realize it, but her soul had found the one. Her soul had found her dream person. Her soul found herself through this other person and ever since then ever since that day (laughs) she started thinking about him all the time she started hearing him his voice in her head all the time she she like saw him everywhere like saw his energy everywhere And it would drive her crazy because it's like this light switch turned on and she couldn't turn it off. But at the same time, for the first time in her entire life, she felt energetically locked in the place with her own essence. She was very aware of who she was all of her life, but it was the first time where she literally felt aligned, mind, body, and soul. And from that day on, she was just like, dude, like, okay. I don't know what's going on, but she started seeing shit (laughs) on her feed. 
saying stuff like soulmate and twin flame shit and divine counter shit and at first she was just like okay what the fuck is this you know so she did her research and she's like oh well I guess that's what this is and even though she hates the rhetoric and she hated the she hates the terminology she couldn't shake the fact that what was happening is exactly what was being described through the interwebs. But she still went on her journey her own way and, you know, just learned as she went along. The crazy thing is, is that she made a decision to figure out who she was and what it is that she wanted. And... the only one that could teach her that is her mirror (laughs) her twin soul right her reflection so the next few years pass by (laughs) and she's faced with a lot of shit a lot of shit that she didn't know that was sitting in her system energetically She was rattled to the core, being triggered every fucking day in every possible way. And it's like this person (laughs) was showing her all of her shit that she needed to face, all of her demons that she needed to learn how to love. all of the illusions that she needed to break through so that she could open her heart, remove the barriers to get to her heart first and crack open her heart so that she could pour love into herself and realize that she is love and that she is infinitely loved. Every fucking day she was hit on the head with a new lesson or just a moment of processing stagnant or old energy that needs to be transmuted and transformed. Fast forward to today. She's in a place where she's learned how to unconditionally love herself, really listen to herself, really ground herself and really be in her body and be in flow. (laughs) How do I know? Obviously, (laughs) because this story is mine. This journey is mine, and it has been one hell of a fucking journey. (laughs) I wanted to tell you this because... You have no idea how long I've been waiting for you, either. I've never really known what it is that I believe in or what it is that I want to believe in, which is why I broke away from the herd to figure out my own path, figure out my own truth. And that's the one of the hardest things to do that I've learned. I'm not affiliated with any kind of religion or creed or whatever although I don't 
knock any religions. I respect them all. But one thing that I learned that I do believe in is love. I believe in love. I believe in true, deep, unwavering, unshakable, untouchable love between two people that goes beyond death. I believe in eternal love. And I've realized and learned that I've been searching my entire life to find it. But I was looking for it in the wrong place. I was looking for it outside of myself. through outside attention, outside validation, money, pay. And one thing that I've learned in my journey, especially these past three years, is I finally learned how to love. I finally learned how to love myself. I finally gave in to getting to know myself. And letting go of the fear of knowing the truth of myself. Letting go of the fear of my own shadow. And finding out what really makes me me. And you taught me that. You are my true reflection. You're my greatest reflection. And you're my greatest teacher. You showed me the way and you showed me my truth. And it has been the hardest thing in my life. I've cried many nights. I've cried many days. There's been days where I've cried all day. Upset at where I was and upset at the fact that I made this decision to come home to myself. Because it was just so fucking hard. Some days would be really, really hard. Other days would be very, very light. But that's what it takes to really get to know your truth and really learn to love yourself. You have to just go through the shit, walk through the dark, Love those places where there is no light so that it can learn how to shine. And you taught me that. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for showing me the way. 
Thank you for guiding me, showing me my truth. And <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. But again, I just wanted to say I can't wait to meet you. <clears throat> I know you're here. I know you're real. But I denied that for a very long time. But I denied it because I didn't believe that I deserved it. I didn't believe that I deserved such great, deep, passionate, powerful love. I believe that I didn't deserve the love that I've believed in all my life the love that I want to experience, the love that I give to myself. And now that I'm fully pouring out my truth, opening my heart, I realize that I'm ready to fully let you in, let you into my heart, <laughs> into my world, into my home, so that we can be together, grow, learn, heal. and pour into each other the kind of love that we've given to ourselves, the love that we learned in our journey, the love that we believe in, true, deep, real, raw, unconditional, untouchable love beyond death. <clears throat> To answer your question, I do look up at the moon and I do think of you. I think about you every day. And I've thought of you every day ever since that night where my gut, my spirit <laughs> recognized who you were. I've thought of you every day since. <laughs> I haven't been able to get you out of my head, out of my thoughts, out of my energy because you are me and I am you. And that's the truth. That's my truth. That's our truth. So that's all I wanted to say. I don't want this audio to be long. It's already after. It's already been 30 minutes long. But I love you. I can't wait to finally meet you in the physical and tell you everything. I believe in you. I believe in us. I'm so proud of us. <laughs> I look up to us. I'll see you soon. Bye.
I love.